Hey guys, how's it going in this video here? What I want to show you is where this purge valve uh, solenoid is at. So on this car here, um, this is a 3.6 uh, GM uh, LLT. You can find this in, I think, Camaros, Malibus, uh, Equinoxes, uh, Enclaves, probably other models as well. So um, I don't know if it'd be the exact same configuration because some of those can be coming front wheel drive configuration. This is a, I mean, rear wheel drive configuration. This is a front wheel drive configuration. So anyway, I had to remove this air box housing here, which I didn't have to remove, but I removed it anyway. That but the, I had to take off the air intake hose that went right here and the throttle body that goes right here. So the piece in question we're trying to see is the problem is this thing right here. That's the pair sold on now is taking our gas vapors and sending it up through here back into the engine to be burned in the chambers here. So with that said, uh, I already got the scan tool up and running, so let's, uh, uh, let's uh, go ahead and get in here. All right, hit OK. And, uh, oh, and by the way, I'll just show you this real quick before I, and I, before I go in. I have a 16 foot cord that runs all the way from the outside of the car. So if you're interested in getting a 16 foot cord for your scan tool, I mean, it works great. The one thing I would recommend doing is that if you got it, kind of hold it like this to keep pressure off that red um, uh, cord that's going into your thing and set it down maybe on the back to keep pressure off of this thing here. But otherwise, it's fantastic. So anyway, um, let's keep going here. We're going to go into system selection. Engine control module. This is a 3.6 front wheel drive. All right. So we're going to uh, actuation test, evaporator system, per solenoid valve. All right. So we're going to try to, uh, let me move my scan tool over here so I can be next to the car and just make this a lot easier for myself here. All right. So that's it. Uh, Let's go ahead and increase this so we can. This is what it's to sound like. So, right now, it's going to start on 9%. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to make these uh, activated and I'm going to compare it to the actual new part when I put it in. Okay, that's 19%, that's 30.9%, 39%, 49%. 59, 69, so, so right there, slow down, it's 79, isn't that weird, but I don't know if that means anything, let's keep going, that's 89%, maybe it's just opening for longer periods, so okay, this is how it should sound, and then 99, there's no operation, all right, we're going to compare that to the new one when we install it. We're just going back down in order here to see what it sounds like. I'm going kind of fast here, 49%. Okay, so now we're going to go down to 49 So with that said, uh, that's going to be it for the scan tool for right now. I'm going to unhook it. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm using the D8 for this one here. And um, just a few other things I'm going to show you what I'm going to do while I'm, while I'm in here. Then I'm going to change this air intake uh, uh, hose here. My old one has a, uh, let's see if we can get under the light so you can see it has a, uh, has a, if I can get it focused here. I guess I can't get it focused like that. Let's see if I can like this. There's a crack right there as you can see right here. And um, it's not that big, but I'm just changing it because I found it at a pretty good price. Um, Another thing I'm going to do while I'm in here is that I'm going to uh, clean the throttle body out. And because, uh, again, on these three sixes, sometimes when these throttle bodies are dirty, they'll make your stability track uh, error code or whatever you want to call it. It's not a check engine light, but it'll show up on your dashboard. So if you keep this clean, that'll, that'll potentially keep that from happening now. And if you do decide to clean this, actually buy throttle body cleaner. Don't don't. I wouldn't recommend using brake cleaner. For this. So with that said, um, let me go ahead and get this part here installed and uh, I'll go ahead and um, come back. Oh, wait a minute. First, the next part of this video I forgot is that on the bench top here, we're going to look at the resistances and actually even the um, continuity between 
the old purge valve and the new purge valve. Additionally, I'm going to also draw a vacuum on both of them to see if there any difference. All right, with that said, you guys take care, and I'll see you right now in the next clip. All right, guys, so in this part of the video here, <coughs> we're going to take a look at the, um, the resistance in these two pieces. And um, this here, first of all, I want to show you this. If you look at, this is the old one. And look at that o-ring it looks it doesn't look quite as um uh let me let me get my light here maybe that can help out here i just want to show you that that o-ring sometimes simple things like that could be the culprit the situation like this you see that o-ring right there's a little bit um it's not as um supple looking as this new one like this one looks a little bit closer to the edge right here than this one so I'm not saying that's the issue with this thing, but um, little things like that can make a huge difference. So anyway, with that said, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, first of all, I need to pull this O-ring off anyway. So go ahead, let me pull this O-ring off of here. I might could even leave it big as this thing is, big, big as my, uh... okay, let's go ahead and pull that off. All right, so that's off. All right, so that's what we're gonna need for the vacuum. So all right, first of all, we're gonna check the resistance on this thing. So, all right, we got our thing already on for the resistance. We can even take the light on if you need that. All right, so we get this hill right here in a good situation here. All right, this is the old one. And that resistance is about, let's see, what it sounds, 15.0. All right. And then this here is the let me make sure that's a new one. Yeah, this is a new one, yeah. Yeah, this is a new one for sure. All right, so um, that's the new guy here. I just, I'm um, checking that. Hold on, let me put it back. Checking that. And that, <coughs> excuse me, resistance is about 15.0. So the resistance are about the same. In some cases, in this case, it doesn't matter. You can check for continuity. So we're gonna turn, turn the continuity and you should hear a beep. Hold up. Okay, we hear a little beep there. That's the new one. Here's the old one. You can also check continuity on these as well. In this case, it's, it doesn't. We know that um, we don't really necessarily need to know continuity, but that's the that's the. Um, if I can get that thing held in there, that's the um, old one. Yeah, so anyway, sometimes it's good to check continuity on parts. So anyway, we verified the resistance, seemingly that it's the same. All right, so now let's um, see if we can get this hose over top of this thing here. Right, I, I didn't have any hose on hand, so I had to go to the hardware store and um, kind of get some makeshift. Um, I got a hose, I got some hose, some clear vinyl hose and some um, hose clamps to make sure that I got a good seal. So let me uh, just put this up here on this. I'm gonna draw a vacuum and let it sit for about five minutes. I'm not gonna let it sit, let it sit too long because I don't really think it has a vacuum issue. I'm just checking it just to be thorough, but I think the inside mechanism is sticking from time to time. Or even that, that, um, uh, that uh, O-ring could be the issue as well. All right, so let's, okay, we got that tight. Let's see if we can draw a vacuum on it. Okay, so apparently I don't have this tight enough somewhere. I think it's probably on this end here, unless this hose got a hole in it somehow. Let's see, all right, tighten that up. Try that again. Okay, so it's, it's on this end here then. So I need to somehow tighten this end up here more. So get this end tightened up a bit more here. Should have got some thicker holes here. Cause I don't know this is gonna see. Yeah, it's, I don't know if this hose right here is gonna do it. Because I got it about tight as I can get it and um, Let's see here. I'm gonna try to get it much tighter here. Okay, let's try that there. So we get. Okay, 
Okay, so that means I can get it a little tighter then. Because I do feel a... Wow, so that means I, when I get this up, I'm going to have to leave this. No, nah, but I'll probably change my system in the future to make sure that I can get, get a good vacuum. I think I just stripped that stripped that uh, thing out. All right, I just stripped that thing out. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to stop the video, and I'll be back um, once I get this sorted out. Hey, guys. How's it going? I'm back. I finally got my vacuum system worked out. And um, this right here is a new one. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, I had <laughs> the old one first and I kept thinking, oh, my vacuum system is not working. It will not hold a vacuum. So anyway, this here, um, I ha I've been gone for five minutes. I had to get everything started. So in the meanwhile, I just said, you know what, I'm going to just go ahead and capture the video. And as you can see, this here is a new part. There is no vacuum loss. Now, let's take the new part off. All right. Put the put the old part here right here on. And as we can see, let's pump it up. It cannot hold a vacuum. So it looks like okay, we take this off. Don't forget, I did take the O-ring off this and I left the O-ring up here, but the O-ring doesn't matter because it's not even on part right here. It's just, it's just right. And again, to be thorough, about the O-ring back on the old unit. All right. This is the old unit right here, but now with the O-ring on it, we're going to push that up there and draw a vacuum on it. And as we can see that the vacuum cannot hold a vacuum. It's, it's, it, let me see if I get it into focus. It's um, moving. As you can see that there. And all right, so let's take that off. And then we put the new one back up there, which is the new guy here. Pull a vacuum on it. Um, as we can see that there is no vacuum loss and a while ago I left it sitting for five minutes and again you see again you immediately saw vacuum loss in the old one but the new one here there's no vacuum loss at all so therefore we have I guess found the smoking gun here to know that this part is faulty that the purge solenoid valve or the purge valve so like not hold a vacuum so with that said that's how you troubleshoot uh and diagnose uh uh a p0442 if it's the per solenoid valve that that is and um you can get your fix that way with that said uh i hope you guys enjoyed uh this video here this is my little system i got set up here um multimeter here i'll have things like this linked in the description if you want to try it out this this and i'm also a 16 foot um um, uh, uh, ODB2 cable so if you want to use your scan tool outside of the car but with that said um, what I'm going to do is uh, the video is not over once I install the part then I'm going to do the increase on it to see can we get alright guys so all right, guys. So I'm back here with um, I got the new one installed so what I'm going to do is we're going to go through and we're just going to listen to it really quick and just see does it sound the same or not we've already verified that, that piece that the old one is faulty for the vacuum that doesn't mean that it won't sound the same you know the new one installed as the old one so let's see i'm just curious so this is how you learn when you're a diy so i would say let's take a look at the evap system here per solenoid valve and we're just gonna all right That sounds a hey. That sounds quite different. That it's not as clicky. The other one was clicking much louder than this. Okay. Okay. So the other one did slow down at seventy nine. I do remember that. So that's right. So okay. So maybe when it gets to seventy nine, maybe 
the, the valve is opening wider, so therefore it can open at, at, at less intervals. That's why you hear less clicking. But one thing I can tell you is this, I don't know if you can notice, but I can notice that that old one was much clickier than this one. So with that said, um, that's another indication that probably the purge valve is going bad, seemingly at, at least on this car anyway, with this AC Delco part is that that one that's faulted that does not hold a vacuum was quite clicky. This thing here is um, way less clickier than that one. I mean, it sounds a little bit more muffled. I don't know if you can tell. But anyway, that's it, you guys. I'm going to uh, reinstall my throttle body here after I clean it, reinstall my new air intake hose here, and that's it. And uh, with that said, uh, that'll be the end of the video. Uh, you guys take care. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.